Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Thursday morning, the day after Arsenal stopped the rot, I want to say, somewhat, with that 1-1 draw against Southampton last night. Not a victory that we all wanted, but not a defeat, and I think at the moment that is the big thing, certainly at home. Anyway, uh, avoiding a fifth straight home league defeat for the first time in the club's history and doing it with 10 men for a large chunk of the game, about half an hour after Gabriel sending off, and there was plenty to dislike about Arsenal's performance last night, certainly in the first half, but there was a little bit to like as well. And I think at this stage of the season, how are things are going, you've got to hold on to those little green shoots of recovery. And maybe there were some signs yesterday of uh, Arsenal getting back to something like um, some sort of form. I suppose there was certainly much bigger improvement in the second half. They started the half well, the second half well, they got themselves level with a really nice goal. Um, and then they shot themselves in the foot. But after they shot themselves in the foot, after the red card, I thought they showed a lot of fight. They held on for half an hour against a very good Southampton side. You know, Southampton side, who I think, could have gone top if they won last night um, prior to that Tottenham-Liverpool game. Um, and, you know, they saw it out well. They threw their bodies on the line in the middle of blocks. I thought David Luiz came on and played very well. I thought Royal Holding did well in that final half an hour. Um, and, you know, they could have won it at the end with Rob Holding's header. They hit the crossbar as well. So... It wasn't a win that we all wanted, but there was some signs there. There's certainly signs of the players fighting for their manager and fighting for themselves, more importantly. You go back to, I think it was against Southampton as well, we were in Emery's last league game in charge. And I remember it was a two-all draw, wasn't it? Lacazette equalised right at the end, and the players barely even celebrated that the mood was that low. But it wasn't like that last night. You saw the celebrations when Aubameyang scored. You saw what it meant to them all. And I think at that point they thought they were going to go on and win the game. And then obviously the red card happened a few minutes later and everything got turned on its head just as it did against Burnley the week before. Um, and that's something that Mikel Arteta has to get a grip on now. The discipline is a real, real problem. That's three red cards in the last five games. That's seven red cards in the Premier League since he took over. No other team have got more than three in that time frame. And that is a big, big issue. You can't win Premier League games consistently if you've got 10 men. And you look back at these games, the Leeds game, all right, Leeds were on top. But Arsenal were still at nil-nil with a large chunk of that second half to, to play against the Leeds side that always tend to concede goals. Um, and had Pepe stayed on the pitch, they could have easily gone on and won that game. Burnley, I think they definitely would have gone on and won that game. They were all over them at the start of that second half before Xhaka did what he did and got the red card. They ended up losing it. Um, last night, again, it looked like they were... You know, they were going to go on and win that game. Just got got themselves level, were absolutely on top, playing did some decent football. Um, and then the red card changes it all. So that's nine points potentially you could have had there. Um, and in the end, you only walk away with two. And you just got to stop getting yourself sent off. And it's not like they were sent off for, um, you know, things that you can kind of understand. It was just three ridiculous red cards, all of them. Pepe, Xhaka's and Gabriel's last night. And that's something that Mikel Arteta has to get a grip on. He spoke about it last night after the game in the press conference. Um, he said it's very difficult to be, compete in the Premier League when you play for such a long period with 10 men. When you're struggling with, for results, it makes it even more complicated. Um, and then he went on to say, I think the boys stood up to it really well. They showed a lot of character and resistance. They never gave up. A 1-0, I was worried because this moment you can see players starting to hide, but they did the complete opposite. Um, and, he's, and he's right, I thought they did. They showed a lot of passion, a lot of fight and a lot of character. So fair play to them for that. But he needs to get a lid on the discipline problem because there clearly is a discipline problem. This isn't just a coincidence. It's happening on a regular basis. And the players... Maybe they're panicking, maybe they're, you know, the situation is getting to them and they're being a bit too rash, but Mikel's got to get a lid on it. He's got to make sure they do not keep getting themselves sent off because Arsenal aren't going to win football matches uh, if they do, and he needs them to win football matches if he's going to stay in a job. So it's something he's got to get a lid on. I mean, Gabriel sending off yesterday, it came, it was a pretty calamitous performance from Gabriel. He had a bit of a shocker to anything. Look, he's been fantastic since he signed. He's been Arsenal's player of the season by an absolute distance. He's won player of the month for the last three months, which says it all. But it was just a really odd performance from Gabriel last night. He was well off it all night long. It was, it was an accident waiting to happen. It was his fault for the goal. And that his what he did for the goal, for Walcott's goal, kind of summed up his night. He was always trying to get on the front foot. But that, you know, perhaps he, he was doing that because he was too pumped up and he was too determined to try and get his team going he was always trying to read everything in make an interception or be right bang on the back of either Che Adams Walcott or Danny Ings and um but he just kept misreading the situation over and over again is he was 
he was making he was coming in too early he was getting spun too early that's what Che Adams did for the Walcott's goal it's what Walcott did in the incident that got Gabriel sent off um he just got he allowed himself to be turned too quickly and it was just a really odd performance from Gabriel and I think what I would put it down to probably is that he was a little bit too pumped up for for the game and he was trying to get his, trying to get the team on the front foot too much that um it just affected his decision making and he, he looked well off it all night and I was speaking to someone during the game and I'm about a couple of minutes before he got sent off, I was talking about it. Saying so, Gabriel, he looks like an accident where waiting to happen tonight, and unfortunately, he was. So he's going to miss a game against Everton. So it's Granit Xhaka, um, and that is a blow for Arsenal, especially Gabriel. When you think of the high balls that are going to be pumped into the box towards Dominic Calvert Lewin during that Everton game, you know they're pretty direct at Everton. Although they do play some decent football under Ancelotti, especially if uh, Rodriguez is fit, but they do also look to target Dominic Calvert Lewin, who's bullied Arsenal in the past. And you would have hoped Gabriel would have been able to deal with him pretty well, considering Gabriel's height, his physicality, how good he is in the air. So they're going to miss him on Saturday. And that's what I'm talking about with the discipline. It's something they've got to get a grip on because they can't afford to keep play- losing key men at big times in the season. And Mikel Arteta desperately needs results, so he doesn't need his players to be sent off. Um, it's... <laughs> It was an interesting one in terms of what this result could mean for Arsenal. As I touched on at the start of this video, yes, it's not a victory. We all want Arsenal to win games. A draw at home to Southampton is not something you really celebrate, but I do think it potentially could be quite a big moment. Certainly that last half an hour, they could have folded, and I thought they kind of did fold against Burnley on the Sunday after that sending off. They let Burnley get on top, they let Burnley get the goal. Um, They let it affect them too much, but they were determined, you could see they were determined that wasn't going to happen last night. They really put in a battle in display. They really showed that they were still in it for the manager. And um, the fact they held on for the point, yes, it wasn't a win, but they held on for that point. They got something, they stopped that losing run. I think could end up being um, quite a big moment for Arsenal. And Mikel Arteta was asked, actually, you know, is that going to be a, a really important result in your season? He says, I agree. At the end, if you lose the game, some, if you lose the game, it would have been a really difficult one to take. The players showed what we expect them to do, sometimes with more or less quality, but at least the work is there. I saw all the players were participating and they were in the stands as well, shouting, being behind the team and leading the game with them. That's a really strong signal as well, and I'm pleased with that. He's got an absolute point there. It was really apparent how much those on the bench were willing them on and when you kind of think of the the whispers of the changing room the dressing room splits and there are players who are unhappy in the role in the team or lack of a role in the team or lack of a role in the squad even but it was very noticeable last night how everyone was behind them Mustafi players like that was standing up was screaming giving, a, giving the teammates real support in that last half hour while they were trying to hold out and um, keep Southampton out when there were with 10 men you could see it was really noticeable how everyone was together and trying to get them through to get that point and um, it did feel for the first time in fair while that the squad was together and were trying to do something um, and that again is one of the little positives that I'm not I'm not sitting here celebrating a draw against Southampton I'm absolutely not but I'm trying to look at the positives and I do feel there were some to take from last night's game for the first time in a while and one of those things to take from that game obviously was the fact that Aubameyang got his got his goal and I think that's such an important thing for Arsenal um, he needed to get off the mark again certainly from open play it's the first time he scored in the league since open play since that game uh, against Fulham on the opening day and it was a good goal as well actually that will give him confidence really good play from Saka lovely play coming in from the left lovely little touch from Eddie as well and a, and a typical Aubameyang finish and I think the way he took that goal as well kind of <laughs> shuts up the frankly stupid comments that he's lost it or something like that he's clearly not lost it he's exactly the same player as he was four months ago when he was doing ripping Chelsea apart on his own and beating Manchester City on his own is the fact that he's just not getting too many chances in and around the penalty area at the moment that's why he's really struggling last night he got one and he got it it was on his feet it was at his feet rather than his head as well and he stuck it away as Aubameyang pretty much always has done since he's come to Arsenal and as he has done in the whole way through his career really good goal and hopefully that's going to be a big turning point for him because Arsenal look they need Aubameyang to start scoring if Aubameyang starts scoring then they're going to have a lot better chance of winning football matches. And Mikel said that after the game in his press conference. He said, hopefully it's going to change everything dramatically and he's going to score every game because this is what we need at the moment. We need the points. And in order to do that, we need so many go- to score many more goals, be more efficient when we have chances. Um, I think it's going to make him really good. And I asked Mikel, actually, you know, did you see it sort of lifting the Bamiyang's mood already after that goal? He said, I don't have to see it. I'm sure that it's going to take a lot of pressure off him and it's going to release him as well. Um, I mean, that's something, as I said, Arsenal really, really need. They need that 
pressure to be lifted off of Bamiang. They need him to get back. He need him to sort of take, drive the team on, be the captain, take the team on. But he does need to get chances. Last night they did that. They worked a really good opportunity for him and he stuck it away. That's what you need to do more of. Um, I thought Saka was fantastic the way he came in. And for a 19-year-old kid, however old he is now, I think he's still a teenager, isn't he? He's almost taking the team on by himself there. Um, out of nothing, creating something and giving Aubameyang the opportunity to score. And I think it says an awful lot about Bukayo Saka. There's been lots of disappointment and doom and gloom at Arsenal at the moment. But I think when you look at players like Saka, that is the, short, the shining lights you've got there. Something to hold on to looking forward over the next few years. Some extremely talented youngsters. And the way Saka stepped up yesterday and drove the team forward and got themselves that equaliser, I think shows an awful lot about him. And it's certainly going to help Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang in the long term as well. Um, I've touched on it already the sort of team news ahead of that game at Everton on Saturday evening going to be a tough game for Ever uh, for Arsenal that we saw what Everton did last night against Leicester we saw what they did against Chelsea at the weekend as well so they're going to be full of confidence Arsenal certainly missing some important players for that game no Gabriel now after that red card last night no Granit Xhaka after his red card as well at the weekend uh, Thomas Partey still injured Martinelli training but unlikely so they're the sort of players who are certainly going to miss out for Arsenal Everton got their own problems Alan got injured yesterday against Leicester did his hamstring so he will certainly miss the game um, Ricarlison I think he did something to his wrist by listening to Ancelotti after the game he seemed to say that uh, Ricarl Richar Richarlison will be fine for that so he will certainly play against Arsenal by the looks of it Rodrigo Rodriguez 50-50 if he's sort of just coming back to training now. Um, so they're going to assess him over the next couple of days, see if he can make it for Arsenal. If not, he'll come back for the Everton game. Uh, Lucas Digne, obviously out, and Coleman out as well. So Everton got their own problems, got some important players missing, just like Arsenal. Um, it's going to be a tough one for Arsenal. What a, it marks a year, pretty much, bang on a year from when Mikel Arteta was appointed. I think it's one day before he's appointed. His first game was actually get a, away at Everton. Uh, on the 21st of December last year, but he didn't take the match. He was sitting in the stands. Um, so is Ancelotti, actually, um, because he'd been appointed the day before. But Freddie Lundberg, if you remember, he took that game. So it's going to mark pretty much bang on a year since Arteta took charge. Certainly been lots of highs and lows during that period. The highest of highs with the FA Cup win, the lowest of lows pretty much right now with this current run of form that Arsenal are on. The fact they find themselves 15th in the Premier League. Hopefully we're going to see a little bit more confidence in the team after that result last night and getting that point and they'll go up to Everton and put in a decent performance. Um, they need to because it doesn't matter who you're playing at the moment, if it's a tough game or a relatively what you'd say could be an easy game. Um, Arsenal just got to find wins, whoever they're playing. And they've got Everton today, then they go to Man they got Man City in the Cup on the Tuesday and then Chelsea on Boxing Day. So it's not getting any easier over the next couple of weeks for Mikel Arteta, but he needs to find a way of winning. Hopefully, last night's result will spark his team into something resembling life. We will have to wait and see. But uh, I'll be up at Everton on Saturday That'll be my last game for a week because I'm off until the Chelsea game then. Um, but I will be at Goodison Park. Um, Mikel Arteta is speaking to us tomorrow ahead of that match. So I'll be back doing the usual video after that press conference, running through what Mikel had to say, um, given the latest in terms of team news and my predicted 11 for the game at Goodison. Thank you for watching today's video, everyone. Do enjoy the rest of your day and I will speak to you soon.